Hey, listen, just wanted to remind everyone, no marriage class tonight. Marilyn and I are headed to Teen Challenge to teach our monthly class. I want to talk about divine healing. I want to talk about is it God's will to always heal a person? And if it is God's will, why he doesn't heal someone? And we'll get started as soon as someone hops online this next month. We will not be having an unaddicted revival service. We'll be having a benefit singing. Uh, that'll be, I think, on the 19th at 5 o'clock. The money raised will be helped to, will help to uh, put money back to pay intake fees for those that are interested in going to faith-based rehabs. Um, if you didn't get a chance to watch last night's Facebook Live, uh, with Malik and I, we're talking about uh, deliverance and Gen Z's uh, overwhelming attraction to the occult and why they're so attracted to the occult. Please go back, watch that, and share it. And, um, well, maybe some folks will hop online. Let's talk about divine healing. Uh, when we look at Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, by his stripes, we are healed. Now, I believe the actual interpretation of that scripture has to do more with emotional healing than actual physical healing. But I believe an application of that scripture absolutely applies to physical healing. You know, it began to bother me back at the first of the year, Marilyn was instantly healed. And for months, we didn't see any more miracles. And so I began to seek the Lord. And as I was breaking down the 16th chapter of Mark, I, I I saw that, hey, that there's some things that will happen. We're casting out demons. I mean, legitimate uh, demonic manifestations. People's lives radically change after the encounter with the Holy Spirit as we take our authority over darkness that is consuming and afflicting and influencing them. Um, and we've seen multiple people, even kids as young uh 11, 12 years old, begin to pray in their heavenly language. Uh, and I said, well, Lord, I, I see those things, but why is it, why aren't we seeing more miracles? And then I begin to study on healing. And the first thing I had to establish is it is God's will for us to be healed. Why aren't we healed? Because we live in a fallen world. Our bodies remain under the Adamic curse. Uh, that's the reason we get sick. That's the reason we get injured. That's the reason we die. That's the reason that our DNA or our uh, genome has deteriorated over the years. And getting old is a curse. We are going to physically die, but we don't have to spiritually die. When we get saved, our minds are saved, but... Our minds are not saved, and our physical bodies will never be saved. Your physical body will be saved when you take your last breath. So how does it work? How does God decide who gets healed and who doesn't get healed? Number one, God doesn't decide. God's decision is for us to walk in healing. It is. But what keeps us from being healed? The number one thing is faith. We look in Mark, the sixth chapter, we see Jesus, the Son of God, the Word incarnate, God himself on the earth, was limited in the miracles that he could do, uh, not by uh, a lack of power, but by his uh, understanding of the law of dominion. We have dominion. That's the reason the world's messed up. So sometimes it's a lack of faith. It, we just don't get, sometimes it is because healing may be the worst thing for us. How many people are in heaven today because they got that diagnosis? How many people only come to God in a hard time? Uh, and a lot of times we're praying for healing and it's not the physical that has the problem. It is a spirit that's causing a problem. But it is God's will to heal. It is God's will to heal. And we are seeing healing miracles on a weekly basis. Not only are we seeing people 
delivered from demonic spirits. Not only are we uh, engaging darkness at various levels each and every week, we are seeing people healed. We are seeing uh, acts come to life at Short Creek. We're doing exactly what we feel like we're supposed to. We're preaching the uncompromised gospel. Repent. Where Jesus looked at the lady and told her to go and sin no more. And John the fifth chapter, he said, go and sin no more unless something worse come upon you. We are preaching, lay aside the weight in sin that doeth so easily beset you. We're preaching the grace of God, that it is only possible through God's grace that we're able to lay the sins aside. Uh, we're preaching the love and the mercy, the cross, the blood. Uh, and we're preaching deliverance because in Acts, the 10th chapter, in the 38th verse, he said, we all know about Jesus, how he went around healing and delivering. Let me tell you something about the ministry of healing and the ministry of deliverance. They're one and the same thing. Not everyone who is sick has a demon. But just about everyone who has a demon has some kind of physical ailment as the result of the demon. So I encourage you. Uh, I know there's people out there that, that say it doesn't exist no more. Look, you need to come to Short Creek. If your pastor is telling you that healing and the gifts of healing, the gifts of the Spirit no longer exist, you really need to come and see. The, uh, the psalmist uh, challenge us, taste and see that the Lord is good. Challenge God. Ask God. Say, God, if this is real, show me. And uh, so I do. I believe in healing. We see healing. God doesn't always heal. Probably got a lot to do with our faith. And then some of it is, is man, we just do things to make ourselves sick. Uh, we don't eat right. We, we don't uh, get enough sleep. We don't get enough rest. Uh, you know, we're not getting the kind of exercise that we need. We live sedentary lifestyles. And I know y'all don't like me preaching that, but we do. We, we need to take accountability. We have to take accountability. So share this. It'll be on YouTube in a little while. Anyway, God's desire. He's a good father. He is a good, good father. He wants to heal you. His desire is to heal you. His desire is to uh, restore you. His desire is to deliver you. His desire is to give you an abundant life. God, listen, listen, be sure to be there tomorrow night or tune in. God's desire is to serve you. Jesus said, I came to serve, not to be served. Do any parents out there serve their children? Is God not our Abba Father? If he's a good father, is it his desire to serve us? Is it his desire to empower us to make it through this life? God wants to serve you. Are you going to do anything bad to your kids? God ain't going to do anything bad to you. But we do reap what we sow. We do. The only way we learn is by reaping. The only way we're humbled is by our sins costing us something. Anyway, I love y'all. Pray for us as we go to Teen Challenge tonight. Uh, be there tomorrow night as we talk about in the next few weeks. We'll be speaking on overcoming um, the affliction of the orphan spirit. Uh, man, this is some really good stuff that I've been studying. So I look forward to seeing you. Uh, remember, the altars are always open. Uh, if you're struggling with things, maybe we'll do a video real soon about how to tell if you're dealing with a demon or the flesh. That'll probably be the next video. Anyway, God bless y'all. Y'all have a great day.